Beats Part 2. This is Part 2 of the Robin Hood series. Both of these guys played in the 60s and 70s. And this guy, man, this guy is special for a lot of people. People really do remember him. People are He is known to a certain extent. But the way he's impacted modern basketball and the way he's impacted basketball that's so amazingly translatable today is what he made up until this is named Jerry West. Man, Jerry West is a special player. So what do you think about Jerry West as a player um, for this list? The logo, man. It's logo for a reason. Probably one of the greatest Lakers of all time. Um, can't mm-hmm. even be argued with that. Probably possibly can be possibly one of the greatest GMs of all time. Probably won't be arguable. Yes. It's just as a player, I mean, unselfish, volume scorer, fantastic passer. I mean, there's there's a reason why his name is Clutch. Why well, his nickname is Clutch is because mm-hmm. he's just he's known for being cool headed in those high pressure moments. Where you know, mm-hmm. where you know you need this bucket to win, where you know you need this this stop to win. You know you need this play to happen to win. He makes it happen. He's he's one of those guys who you know makes it happen. Yeah. He, he directly correlates to winning. Because he has that ice in his veins, where he's just like, even in those hyper yeah. situations, where he's just, don't worry, guys, I got this. I mean, I remember seeing yeah. this one clip of him, right? I think you might have sent it to me. It's the clip where it's like a couple seconds on the clock, he heaves it from half court like it's nothing. Mm. Cash, game over. They won the finals. Like, what? Like, yeah. He's just that caliber of player. I mean, he's definitely special. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh-huh. one of those he's one of those players where like we look at him based off of his team accomplishment, you know, as far as like rings and things of that nature. But then we don't make the comparisons that need to be made with people who we see nowadays. It's like he mm. gets really gets lost. We, it's, the NBA has really become a what have you done for me lately kind of league. So if you if you mm-hmm. haven't played in the league lately, then you very rarely will get a comparison. Yeah. When you even though you birthed a certain a certain caliber player and like whether they want to admit it or not, their favorite player was based off of you. He's that kind of player, just like what was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. It's true. <clears throat> Can agree more. So we're going to uh, go ahead and get into um, uh, Jerry West's accolades, and we'll talk about that first, and we'll start to talk about uh, other things. But first thing first, Jerry West, six foot three, point guard slash shooting guard, um, either or, from West Virginia, 14 years in the NBA, Hall of Famer, 14-time All-Star. <laughs> he has an All-Star every time he, year he played. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, one-time scoring champ. One time NBA champion, twelve time all NBA, five time all defensive team. Wow. One time finals MVP, all star MVP, one and eight in the NBA finals. Yes, he was in the NBA finals nine times. His career stats are twenty seven points per game, five point eight rebounds, six point seven assists, forty seven percent from the field goal percentage, and eighty one percent from the free throw line. Um Regular season stats, the most notable thing I can do to condense everything for you guys is he averaged more than 30 points per game and five assists per game four times in his career. And all those times he was shooting over 75% from the free throw line. And most of those seasons, it was like 81, 82, 83, 87, 86. It was mid, low to mid 80s from the free throw line. So this guy could shoot. Um, and some of the playoff stats, I mean are ridiculous the most ridiculous thing year five his his fifth year in the nba during his playoff run he averaged 40 points per game 5.3 assists and 89 percent for the free throw line (laughs) he averaged over 30 points per game let me see here over 30 points per game one two three four five six seven eight times in the playoffs that's ridiculous. Like that is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you know this. Is it. So he steps it up in the playoffs. He hits another level in the playoffs. 
So those are his stats, Chris. So what are you thinking about those stats and what do you think about like his accolades and all those type of things like next to Jerry West? Man, those stats are ridiculous. Like 40 points <laughs> averaged. He averaged 40. Yes. In the whole playoff, like not in a, just a series, but like the whole playoffs. Probably when he was going on an NBA Finals run to this, lose to the Boston Celtics. To make this clear, this is like pre-free throw line, by the way, too. So you gotta like think about that for a second. Yeah. These are all twos. Yeah. To put it in math terms, yeah. <laughs> this man hit twenty jumpers <laughs> every game. Yeah. Twenty jumpers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he averaged 20 jumpers, yeah. knocked down a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like mind blown. Uh, yes. Yes. Insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That, that guy is ridiculous. Um, yeah. This is a guy, right, who we have seen, you know, you know, we revere him because we can't not revere him because every time we see the NBA logo, we see Jerry West. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't think of a clutcher person in NBA history without thinking of Jerry West, even though he gets looked over in that regard as well, even though he's very clutch. Um, mm-hmm. Clutch started with him. Um, there's, you can't look at modern NBA players who have done similar things to Jerry West in the same amount of time as Jerry West and not compare the two. What I'm going to get at here is think of the two guards that really explode and come to life and can pass at a high level and can score and can average 30 to 40 points a game can, who, had, who had the ability, who had the 60-point explosions, who had the big playoff moments where they averaged 30-plus points per game. We, you, can't, <clears throat> you can't look at history and look at modern history because this, this will be history in a couple years. What, the, what James Harden did will be history in a couple years. What Russ did will be history in a couple years. You know? You can't look at these amazing two guards and not and not see parts of Jerry West's game in them. This is a guy. Twenty mm-hmm. jumpers is what he made. <laughs> Twenty mm-hmm. jumpers. Can we? Yeah. Can you name another player who has knocked down as many jumpers and went to the free throw line as many times? I I can name a couple. I'm a, I'm pretty sure you can too as well. And I'm pretty sure those of you guys listening out there can do the same. There's not Mm -hmm. too many guys in history who have been able to play on the level of Jerry West, but still not Mm -hmm. as well have as much success as Jerry West. Because, I mean, Jerry got one, but the players that I could think of who who are similar don't have any at this point. But they're still touted as possibly as arguably the best players in their position currently. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with along a similar line of sentiment. I mean, this guy, yeah, say after visual six foot three guy, an average athlete, average. But you have to really watch and understand that he manipulates every possession, every single possession. A lot of times you see him coming off a pick and roll. A lot of times you see him manipulate the. The big's low, I'm going to shoot, you know, the, my guy's getting to the rim. Like, it's a very much modern pick-and-roll manipulation where this guy's so highly skilled because he's got a butter jumper. One, this guy has three-point range. Like, he really would fit well today because he really would be able to shoot the three. He would be able to manipulate the three-point line and run that pick-and-roll. Like, his shooting splits, like, a guy that shot 89% and from the free throw line in the whole playoff series one year is a good shooter. Mm-hmm. That guy can shoot it out from the three point line. You you rarely you can't name me a guy who shoots eighty nine percent from the three point line that can't shoot it from the three. 
Like, I won't believe you. Like, the skill's there. And the pick-and-roll manipulation is where things become special because he really was a manipulator. If he was coming off slow, he was reading, and he was getting to his spots and getting his shots up. He was a great mid-range shot creator for himself, and he was a great shot creator for himself everywhere on the floor. And he was able to manipulate the floor to his um, advantage and make great passes. He's a really, really good passer and high, high basketball IQ player where it's manipulation on everything on both sides of the basketball. Five-time All-NBA, All-Defensive team. Like, this guy was like John Stockton defensively where he would jump passing lanes like a and nobody else. Like, the man, like, was ridiculously high basketball IQ defensively, where he was just in everything. Um, so that's where things become special, and that's where he's special, is he is just so great at those things, and you have to understand he can get the rim and finish. And he has his slow game, but he's so ridiculously skilled that he translates to any era, and he translates so smoothly to this era because that's what Luka Doncic is. That's what James Harden is. Those two guys are high volume scorers and manipulators of defenses that have more spacing and better, you know, more spacing. It makes it easier for to get them get higher assists than five to six to. I mean, he had nine. He averaged nine point five assists later in his career as he was aging in like year twelve, but. Um, you have to understand that this guy is what birthed those kind of guys. The high volume scores that are also good passers as well that dominate our NBA. Look at LeBron James. That's a high volume scorer. That's a great passer as well that dominate the NBA. But he's more comparable to James Harden and Luka Doncic because none of them are going to be in the slam dunk contest. None of those guys are that. But they're ridiculously skilled and so skilled that they're so amazing. And this guy is so underrated because of all of those things that he brings to the table. And unlike Luka and James Harden, he's a great defender. Great defender. So he has that going for him as well. And... You have to understand this guy's a winner. One, get the one and eight finals records out of your head. That doesn't matter anything. Doesn't make any a uh, single difference. And you have to understand that he is the birth of all of those things, and that's why he's important for this series. So, what are you thinking about that, Chris? Oh, it's going definitely the birth. That's why. That's why I was getting at with the comparisons. I just didn't want to just. I know you were going to go there, so I was like, I'm just going to just leave that for you. Yeah. I'm gonna hint it, and then you can take over from there. It's a nice tease. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's most definitely yeah, yeah. the birth Good of job. these players. <laughs> most definitely the birth of these players. I mean, what do we have? What we? I mean, I'm not gonna say what we have a James Harden because who knows? But these these are the caliber of players. These high volume scores. You know, we've seen James Harden drop sixty points. We've seen Luka Doncic have forty, have fifty. You know, I mean, we've seen these large explosions. But these are also highly touted passers these guys you know when we moved james harden to the point guard position when chris paul was injured we saw these we saw the the caliber of passer he was luka Doncic is the point guard up there we see the caliber of passer he is even though he doesn't have too many people to pass to but we see those we see the flashes jerry west is this guy but i mean is is these guys all in one he's the high volume scorer he's the great passer this is this is why we put him in here is because of the fact that he gets overlooked just like these guys will eventually get overlooked because they're just gonna say, "What are they gonna say?" Uh, he's just he was just a great scorer, uh, but the one and eight thing is gonna be a problem. So that means that yeah, he 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 was able to score, but the he's not he's not leading to winning because he's losing so much. That's all that's gonna be said. That's what's gonna that's what that's if Luka Doncic and James Harden never win a ring. That's exactly what the narrative will eventually be about them. The only difference is that Jerry West was a more balanced basketball player, so it was very easy to make him the NBA logo because he did everything. Only the the missing piece for James Harden and Luka Doncic is the defense. That's one thing that Jerry West had. Five time defensive player, the five time defensive mm-hmm. team, all defensive team. That shows yeah. there that he has the defensive mindset. He's a more balanced all around NBA player. True. Very true. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> um, yeah, I personally think that this is so important because it's what leads to winning. Like, you have to understand is that manipulation is complete dominance over the defense because they have nothing they can do. Because the option is either let a guy like James Harden, Jerry West, or Luka Doncic score, or make a great pass that p- dices you up when you collapse the defense to overhelp. Mm-hmm. And then your defense is just always left in this continuous limbo. And something we have learned in the recent years from watching the Golden State Warriors play is passing leads to championships. Good passers, look at LeBron James, good passers lead to rings. They make everything else easier for everybody else on the team. They, whatever the 100% best of what those players are, gets squeezed out of them. And Jerry West doesn't get the respect he deserves for squeezing all the life out of everybody else on that Lakers team. He doesn't get all the respect for being the first guy ever to be a player like this. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that this is what the point of the series is. It's to talk about guys who are underappreciated. This is a Robin Hood. Jerry West is a Robin Hood and part of the Robin Hood series because he is underrated. We are giving you the knowledge of how amazing he is so you can understand the NBA better and understand NBA history better. And all it boils down to mainly is just make your own decision. Go watch film. That's it's very simple. It's very simple. Don't don't take our word for it. Don't take media's word for it. Go watch film. Go watch film. It's, it's a simple YouTube click. You can always go to YouTube University, type in Jerry West highlights, and just see for yourself. Type in Elgin Baylor highlights. Remember, we watched Elgin Baylor, and we was like, are you sure this is Michael Jordan? <laughs> like, But everybody else was like, this is Michael Jordan. This is Michael Jordan for Michael Jordan. You're like, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure this is Michael Jordan? All it takes is a simple click, a simple watch. Well, um, you know, this is what the point of this podcast was today. We want to talk about this with the guys. So, you know, um, really excited about this series. We're going to keep on trying to give you guys really great content about these players. And we got six more of them to go over over the next month. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So, you know, um, we really appreciate you guys listening from TikTok or YouTube or wherever you guys are coming from. We really appreciate all you guys. So um, I'm Jason Collins. And I'm Chris Mahomet. We are the best boys. Peace. Peace out.